Hello friends, this video on evolution part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam originated on earth. Now there are various theories which talk about the origin of life on earth. So the first theory which came into being in this regards was the panspermia theory. So what did this theory say? This theory states that life started on earth from microorganisms sent from other planets. Now these kind of theories were proposed during that time when there was absolutely no idea how life started on earth. So now that we know some of the concepts or so sometimes these old theories might sound funny but then they are not at all because they were the ones who first actually thought about this entire thing. Now these were the Greek thinkers, the early Greek thinkers who said that there are small units of life life like microorganisms or they often call it as spores there they were small units of life and those spores came from some other planet from which planet nobody knew but they just guessed it that maybe some small organisms or spores like thing came from some other planet like how you hear of alien these days so the word alien has become very common that the organisms coming from some other planet into earth there have been so many movies also being done on this concept so uh, basically they also thought something like this that some small units of life are being transferred from some other planet to the earth and then on earth those uh, small microorganisms started reproducing and then later they gave rise to all other forms. So that was one theory which was proposed the first theory you can say. Then later came another theory called the spontaneous generation theory. It said that life originated on earth. So it did not come from any other planet but it originated on earth itself and it originated from non-living decaying matter. So when we say decaying matter something like mud, straw etc. So from there life originated. In fact Aristotle was uh, one of them who supported this theory, the spontaneous generation theory and that is why they named it as spontaneous generation. That means life is generating spontaneously on its own from non-living decaying matter. But then later it was proved that even this theory was not correct. Now who proved that this theory was not correct? So for that came Louis Pasteur. So Louis Pasteur proved with an experiment that it is not that life arises from decaying matter. So let us see what did he do. So he performed an experiment to prove that microorganisms cannot arise spontaneously. So it cannot happen that life just arises on its own. So that doesn't happen. But they can arise only from existing organisms. So that was the theory of Louis Pasteur. He said that life will always arise from an existing life. So it cannot arise just out of nothing. I mean it, it just cannot arise on its own from some non-living matter. That is not possible. So in order to prove this, what, were they, what was actually the ex experiment which he did? So what he did was he took two flasks and in both the flasks he took nutrient broth. So nutrient broth is nothing but a nutrient, a, a fluid like substance which contains all the nutrients which are required to grow a, an organism. Okay, so he took nutrient broth in both the flasks. The only difference that he did was in the first flask, he closed the flask. Now, once the flask was closed, it was like an airtight. So the broth was not open to air. But in the second flask, it was kept open. So it was open to air. Now, what was observed a little later? It was seen that microorganisms were being formed in the open flask but it was not formed in the one which was closed. So what did he conclude out of this? He concluded that the flask which was open to air, so this was open to air. So what happened? Air contains a lot of microorganisms in it. So that means this flask or this nutrient broth was actually exposed to those microorganisms which were present in the air. So from those microorganisms, new organisms arose. So that is what he said that life will only arise from pre-existing life. But in the first case, since it was closed, so the nutrient broth, so the environment was not open to other microorganisms. And therefore here, the microorganisms did not grow from the non-living broth. So Pasteur concluded that spontaneous generation theory was strongly displayed. So he said that 
the spontaneous generation theory is not at all correct because life cannot arise spontaneously on its own because this experiment clearly proved that so he gave a theory that life arise only from pre-existing life so if you already have living microorganisms so from those microorganisms you can have many other microorganisms but you cannot have living organisms from non-living stuffs so that was told by Louis Pasteur but even after Louis Pasteur, there was another proposal which was given by a, a, pair, a couple of scientists that is Oparin and Halden. So these two scientists, they gave a proposal that life arise from pre-existing non-living but organic molecules. So this was their proposal. So they said that yes, this is true that life will arise from something which is already existing. But it is not necessary that pre-existing thing has also to be a living organism it can be a living organism but it has to be organic so what is an organic molecule any molecule which contains carbon that is organic so they gave some examples of non-living organic molecules like proteins and RNA so we have spoken enough about RNA and protein so you all know what are they so they said that all the life forms or all the living organisms that we see they all arose from this RNA and protein so from such organic molecules but they did not give any experimental proof as such to prove this that it is possible for life to arise from such molecules However, there was another scientist called Miller who performed a very famous experiment which is now popularly known as Miller-Urey experiment. After the name of the scientist Miller who performed this experiment and his professor Urey under whose guidance he performed it. So a Miller-Urey experiment experimentally proved that life, it is not life arise from pre-existing, it can arise from non-living molecules as well so let us see what did he do so he performed an experiment creating conditions in laboratory similar to early earth now this scientist he had a different approach altogether to perform his experiment he said that okay we all know how the environment or how that the entire climatic condition was there in uh, on early earth so there was no atmosphere at that time. We just had a couple of gases like methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide and water vapor. So those were the things which were present on early earth. So he created the same environment inside the laboratory and then he tried to see what other molecules are being formed under those environmental conditions. So if he is able to find out what are the molecules or what kind of chemical substances are being formed, then he can actually try to relate that life arise from what kind of substances so miller was an american scientist and under the guidance of professor urey he wanted to experimentally prove this hypothesis so this was how his experimental setup was so his idea was that life could have originated from the basic molecules that were present on early earth so he included all the chemicals that were present on early earth like methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, water vapor. Now how did he use them in this his apparatus? So he took two glass flasks and connected them by glass tubes. So here you can see this is one flask and this is the other one. So this is glass flask one, this is glass flask two and they both are connected by glass tubes like this as you can see here. So what did he do in the first flask he took water and dissolved molecules so in this flask he took water and the dissolved molecules and what did he do in the second flask in the second flask water vapor and the gases came here from flask one so this is flask one and this is flask two so from flask one this water vapor and the dissolved molecules they all came and reached flask two now what happens in flask two now in flask two an electric spark was produced using the electrodes so here you can see these are the two electrodes so this and this so they are the electrodes. Now using these electrodes an electric spark was produced in flask 2. 
and then it was observed that the gases which reached here, the gases got condensed into a liquid due to the presence of this condenser. So here you have a condenser. So when the gases came from flask 2, so let me write here. So this is flask 2 and this is flask 1. Okay, so now when the gases came here to the condenser, the gases got condensed into a liquid and then this liquid went back to flask 1 and then this cycle kept on continuing. So this cyclic process kept happening over time. And what were the gases which were present? Now the gases which were present in this flask were those gases which were present on early earth like methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide and water vapor. So these were the gases that were present and this is the spark discharge which was being produced here. Now what happened was it was observed that after some time the solution developed a pinkish color. So this solution which was being which were being passed between the two flasks. So that solution changed its color and it became a little pinkish. So why did this color change? This color changed due to the formation of some molecules like the amino acids and simple carbohydrates. So it was seen that amino acids and simple carbohydrates were formed. So from where did they form? Because this was also an enclosed apparatus which was not open to air. So it was not uh, open to or it was not exposed to any kind of pre-existing living organisms. But still these molecules like amino acids and simple carbohydrates were formed. So let us quickly look whatever we discussed so far. Electric discharge were created in a closed flask and this contained methane, ammonia, hydrogen, water vapor and they all formed the early earth. They were all components of the early earth. Now it was observed that several amino acids and simple carbohydrates were formed. So what did this show? What did this prove? This gave the theory of chemical evolution. It said that early earth could produce chemicals which were necessary to originate living forms. Now these chemicals were absolutely necessary because amino acids together form proteins. Similarly, simple carbohydrates can also give rise to the polysaccharides. And these proteins, polysaccharides, all these together constitute the various uh, unit or the various parts of a living organism. So the chemicals which were required for living organisms, those chemicals were formed from the components which were present in the early earth. So these were the components that were present by default. So we really did not need to do anything. So with the help of all these which were present on early earth, amino acids and carbohydrates will be formed. And these amino acids will later give rise to proteins and then from proteins gradually the life forms will arise. So this was the main. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.